If you've been here before, welcome back. If you're new, welcome. Today we're doing a full scalping tutorial. Okay, I'm going to teach you guys how to scalp from top to bottom. It's very important to learn how to scalp, even if you're not going to necessarily be sitting in front of the computer taking, you know, two, three, four, five trades a, a, an hour. Um, it's important to learn because when you are looking to enter in general, you'll be able to hit those wicked entries um, and be able to maximize profits while limiting risk. Of course, it just teaches you how to um, how to enter. Okay, before we begin, I just want to say scalping is not for the faint of heart, okay? It's very, very, very difficult. It can be very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Stressful. It can be very, very stressful. It's not for everybody, but again, it is good to learn how to do. Now, if you've seen my trading ranges video, let's turn this off for now. If you've seen my trading ranges video, you're already ahead of the curve because it's similar to trading ranges. Um, it's just on a smaller term time frame. And if you've seen my market cipher videos as well, um, you're also ahead of the curve, right? So scalping, for those who don't know, is when you're trading on a very small time frame like the three minute or the five minute i guess you could maybe consider like the 15 minute depends on how you scalp um or even as degenerate as the one minute is is possible scalping and we're gonna apply many of the lessons that i've previously taught um that are on youtube so if i go over something like cheat sheet entries or uh, divergences or anything like that, make sure you guys go back and watch the other videos. I have a whole playlist that teaches you um, really like these different concepts and stuff. But let's get into the nitty gritty of it and let's figure out how we can get you guys scalping on whatever time frames um, that you prefer. So first things first, to reference my time frames video, when you're doing any kind of trading, not just scalping for that matter, even if you're day trading or, uh, or swing trading, um, you need to have an environmental time frame and you need to have an executional time frame. Okay. What that means is if you're looking to enter on the 15 minute time frame, for example, you need to be able to identify your environment on a larger term time frame, like the one hour or the two hour. And the reason why is because your 15 minute is going to front run your one hour. Okay, we don't know that this green dot is going to be a green dot. We don't know until until it prints. But after it prints, as you can see, we've already made the move. So your executional time frame is going to front run your environmental time frame. Now, the reason scalping is so difficult is because this moves quick. Remember, time frames are an oscillator within themselves, right? So a 15 minute in like this 15 minute oscillation on market cipher B looks like this. The one hour will be four times as slow, right? And the one minute will be like up and down, up and down, up and down. So with that in mind, this is the uh, kind of mentality you need to have when you're scalping. Now, the way that I scalp personally what I prefer to do is I do my top-down analysis where I have my key levels. This is one of them, right? I have my I do my top-down analysis, which don't worry. As time goes on, I'm like I'm giving you guys series. Uh, I'm speaking to YouTube people because I just I just told this to the Discord people right now. Um, but I'm gonna be doing a like my whole series, and by the end of it all, you'll all know how to trade and all know how I find my levels. But what I like to do is I like to wait for price to get to one of my larger term time frame levels. And then I like to scalp within those levels because I have a bias, right? If we come down to this support, which is a support on like a four hour time frame, I know that if we start ranging here, in general, I'm looking for longs. Um, it's just a better bias. But how can we trade if we don't have like a big support like this? Well, let's look at, let's look at what Bitcoin is doing today right now um so yeah no what day is today oh wow i'm way off okay so a few days ago we had this dump and now we're ranging right so now we have our little range right over here now when you're thinking about scalping before you even enter a trade 
you need to know that again because the oscillator moves so fast it's not like a four hour things are subject to change which means your capital is is a lot at risk is a lot more at risk than if you're trading on like a four hour time frame so this is something that you need to be mindful of if you've seen my risk management video um good you need to apply this times 10 when it comes to scalping and if you haven't go watch that right now and then come back because you cannot scalp if you don't know how to manage your risk properly you will absolutely blow your account 100 percent. okay so let's talk about how we're going to actually do the scalping now in previous videos i've talked about trend lines and how i don't necessarily believe in them and that's true especially on the higher term time frames i don't think that just because you drew a line you know, like this, it needs to respect it every time. And, and people just, oh, we're at the line, let me short. That's not what I want you guys to do. However, when it comes to scalping, because price action is so volatile and it moves so quick, these lines tend to, as you can see, get respected. Now that doesn't mean, again, I want you to short every time it hits the line and call yourself a genius because it'll hit the line until it doesn't. And if you're not risking your... Uh, if you're not managing your risk, you're going to lose big time. Okay. So that's one thing I want to just preface by saying is like the trend lines, we are going to use it when it comes to scalping. All right. So how could we scalp this range right now? Well, what I like to do is I like to scalp on the three minute. Okay. The reason I like to scalp on the three minute is it's less noisy than the one minute. Remember, it's an oscillator. If the three minutes like this, then the one minute is like this, right? or I should draw it up here. One minute's like this, three minutes like this. So because it's an oscillator, it's a little bit, you have a little bit more time to kind of see what's going on and gauge what's going on. But more importantly, you have, so if the three minute is my executional time frame, I like to use maybe the 12 as my environmental time frame, right? The very first thing that I said is that your executional time frame is front running your environmental time frame, right? So we don't know that this is the bottom. We don't know that this is gonna be a green dot. Well, how can we know? We jump back down to the three. And in this case, you couldn't even know really either because this didn't look great. But you would, ex like your executional time frame front runs your environmental time frame. Guys, the first digit for the VIP Discord is a six. The reason I don't use the one necessarily is because I use a different, like I use the one for a different purpose. Um, I use the one to front run my executional time frame, which front runs my environmental time frame. So you can see how this starts to get confusing now. And you can see how scalping, when you're super, super zoomed in, you can get lost, like you could, yeah, like get lost in, in what direction you think the overall market's going to go in when you're very zoomed in it's very hard to see think of it like if you're at like the movie theater and you're at the back you can see the whole screen when you're at the back but if you're in the first row like it's right in your face like you can't see it okay scalping is very much like this and i need you guys to understand and you need to be in this mentality that although you think you're seeing it all perfectly and it's all like you're on the one minute and yes you can see it you're blind to the overall picture. And that's very important because this can happen, guys. This happened today. This fast wick, I don't know what percent this is. Let's see. So this was a one, one and a third percent. Let's just call it from here for easy numbers. One and a half, two percent move, whatever. It's not uncommon for Bitcoin to do these wicks. And this is not even that bad. Bitcoin can give you a 5% wick. Bitcoin can give you a 10% wick on a one minute can. It can do that, okay? 10% is a little bit pushing it but it can absolutely do that. So you need to be aware that you're blind. Even though you're zoomed in, you're not as you're not as like 2020 vision as you think. And you need to be aware that you are extremely exposed, okay? When you're entering here and you're high leverage, we're going to get we're going to get to leverage in a little bit. Have, uh, leverage typically when you're scalping is higher. But when you're if you enter here and you put your stop loss here, but price wicks down, you're going to get your your market uh, like stopped order is going to get filled here. So you're going to lose more than what you think you're going to lose. If you if you do it and your stop loss says you're going to lose 10 bucks, you come here and now you just lost 100. OK, so it's very important to just keep this perspective in mind when you're trading. So basically, uh, what do you say? Divert? So basically times four for the environmental time frame. 
it doesn't necessarily need to be times four. I like to use things that are like divisible. So, um, you know, three is div or 12 is divisible by three, right? Uh, so is the 24. It doesn't necessarily need to be, oh, divided by four or divided by five or whatever the case is, but it needs to be like, like you can't say your five is your environmental for your three. Like they're too close together. You need to have, I would say at least a division of four. So if I was going to do like, uh, maybe my, my day trades, I would try to front run my one hour by looking at the 12 minute, right? And the reason why scalping is beneficial is because, so if you're, if you're day trading and you're using your one hour as your environmental time frame, your executional time frame is the 12 minute. Well, now I can front run my executional time frame by using the, th the three minute time frame in terms of scalping. And then I front run my three minute by using the one minute. So again, that's why I said this is a very this is an advanced course. Like you you guys are going to I'm going to shoot a, no, a lot of knowledge your way right now, but um it's it's going to be confusing and actually let me also say like I'm telling you guys right now 100% you're going to lose, 100%. I guarantee you you're going to lose. So, when you're practicing this and when you're trying to learn literally trade with one dollar guys it's not about position size it's about percentage you need to learn the game and if you're trying to learn how to scalp correctly um which i'm gonna teach you you need to be able to have the patience and you need to be able to to like you're managing your risk right especially the beginning you're gonna lose so use one dollar use five dollars whatever something you don't care about um to learn anyways let's get into how we can do it Okay, I talked enough. So in this case, I like to scalp, like I said, on the three minute. Now, if my executional time frame is a three minute and my environmental time frame is the 12, what I like to do on my environmental is just take a look at what's going on. First thing that I can see is we have somewhat of a range, right? We have our range high, which we could put there. And we have now after this wick, our, our, our range low. Cool, right? What I like to do is I like to look at the price just by eye and find a place where price, like just by eye, this is not a perfect science, there's a sticking point, right? Like you can see here a few times we hopped up, support, 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 broke down, resistance, broke down, support, support, so you guys get it, right? Price is dancing around this line. So now I know that when price comes relatively close to this line, again, it's not a perfect science because here we wicked up, right? When price comes above this line or around this line, now we're interested in a trade, not before. Guys, on the lower term time frames, market cipher changes so fast. You cannot see and you cannot predict what's going to happen based on the one minute. Okay, this, I don't know. I'm not going to pull up my trader's reality. This could be a cheat sheet entry for all I know. This is the one minute. This could give us a green dot and then a red dot right after and then money flow continues down and you longed here and now price wicked all the way down here and now you're wrecked. Okay, it can do that. So you need to make sure that when you're scalping, you're on your um, on one of your time frames. Now, what you can do if you don't want to wait for price to get all the way up here and you want to be a little bit more of a degen, which you can do, you can get away with, is you can hop on like an in between time frame or even your your executional time frame and just do the same practice, right? I mean, the levels should relatively be the same, anyways. But just go back in time. It doesn't need to be in your current section, right? Here, you know, again, it's give or take. Like this level right here, price bounced off of. I'm going to look. So so le le let's look at what happened here. So price came down and it, it bounced off this level. And then later on here, it also bounced off this level. Okay. So I would, if I want to be more of a degen and have like in between levels, I'll make this maybe a different color. Like let's, let's, let's say that yellow is our degen color. Oh, whoops. Yeah. So let's say yellow is the degen color. White is our like clear color, whatever. And I'll just go back in the chart and I'll do this wherever I see price has kind of made a sticking point. Like we could put one here. Cool. We'll make it white. Actually, I'll make all of them yellow. You guys get the point, but um you know here we had a couple moves uh let's say there right so you're just drawing levels right it's like levels of a house you're drawing the floors you're drawing the ceilings and you're waiting for price to get to your level it has to get to your level this is non-negotiable it has to because market cipher can mess you up okay it absolutely can mess you up 
right? Now, we're going to talk about how you can actually enter when price gets to your level and what you can look for and the type of candles that you're going to look for as well. Before we do that, I want to mention, and I've said it a couple times just now, Market Cipher is a great indicator. In my opinion, it's the only oscillator that you need, and it's the only oscillator that I use. That being said, there's a lot of fake bootleg versions of Market Cipher. I've seen lately in the past couple of weeks in my Discord floating around, people are talking about, oh, this is a good replacement, this is the same, this is the same, whatever. I've been very vocal about this and I've been very upfront about this. Market Cipher B does not have a good replacement that's like 100% accurate, okay? The money flow is the only thing that no other indicator seems to figure out. And when you're scalping, because the one minute and the three minute and whatever moves quick, the only thing that's steady relatively is the money flow right? Let's go to the one minute. Let me show you what I'm saying. Look at how the money flow is steady. Okay. Look at how the VWAP, I'm going to make it much bigger now. So money flow is steady, right? We can rely on money flow. Even the waves, they're up and down, up and down, up and down. Money flow is nice and curved. Look at the VWAP. VWAP is all over the place. So one minute we know can get crazy and the three minute also. I'm going to say this again because it's important. Do not listen to anybody that tells you that this indicator is good. It's the same as market cipher. No, it is not. If you're using a fake market cipher, unless I, I, I'm going to say this, I'm not the king of indicators. I don't know how to code or any of that, but unless I approve it, in my opinion, anyway, like it's not the same, right? I will put it side by side and I'll make sure that it, it like whatever. Um, but unless it's not the same. Long story short, it's not the same. Don't let anybody fool you. So if you're scalping without the real market cipher, I like you need to keep this in the back of your mind, okay? You cannot rely on these other ones. I'm going to show you. Let me show you. So you guys know I'm not all talk. Let's let's go. Oh my, seriously. <clears throat> let me show you so you know I'm not all talk. Vu Manchu is a very popular alternative right when we're scalping on the one minute we're relying on money flow the heaviest remember what i said during my market cipher b video which is your order of operations your vwap which is this yellow line is a leading indicator for your momentum waves which ultimately is a leading indicator for your money flow let's look at just right here oh look i'm gonna make it big so you guys can see like i'm not playing man i, I i'm not joking when it comes to this you're gonna lose your money if you think otherwise look at this look how thick money flow is here and look at this money flow right over here, okay? It's not even close, and um, it, 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 it's important, okay? It needs to be important. Anyways, I sorry, I know we took a tangent there. I just wanted to say, actually, now that um, I brought it up, I also have to say, as of yesterday, I, well, I've had an affiliate link for Market Safer for a while, but as of yesterday, I have a 20% off discount code for anybody that wants it. It is expensive, and you can get away with using the free ones, but not for scalping. And I always say, you guys can message me uh, in the Discord, and I'll send you guys pictures of the money flow. I have no problem doing that if I'm available, of course. Um, but yeah, I have a 20% discount code. If you use my affiliate link and you use code TRADERGEO, one word, you will get 20% uh, off, so you'll save like 300 bucks or something. Um, and I do think it's worth it in the long run. Anyway, now that we've went over that, because market ciphers are our key indicator, um, we're going to talk about how, key, how can you actually enter. So step number one is we wait for price to get to our level. Okay, so here price came to our level, and we're gonna we're gonna go on the assumption that you know our executional time frame is the three minute, and our environmental is the 12 minute. Okay, so we came. Um, Actually, no, it's not a good example. Let me see. Let's go back to the three. Okay, let's 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 say here. Well, let's use this. So we're on the three minute time frame. Okay, we're on the three minute time frame. We'll use this. We're on the three minute time frame, which is our executional time frame, right? Over time, clearly here you can see money flow is starting to increase, right? So that's our first indicator that we're looking for longs. Now you don't want to long um, necessarily up here right on this green dot it can be tempting to you don't want to long here because um obviously it can come back down 
but you're also not at a key level. Remember, it has to be at a key level. Has to. Non-negotiable. And scalping is not like day trading or swing trading. You guys could take 10 trades in an hour. It could be so quick. So instead of prioritizing your longs, even though money flow is coming up, when you're at this level, you have to prioritize your shorts. Okay? When you're at this level, you have to prioritize your long. And of course, you're going to be managing your risk. Now, what are we looking for? Um, when we're at these levels? Well, we're looking for divergences. What we want is our executional time frame to be either topped out or bottomed out, right? So let's use this line as an example right here. You can see that our 12 minute time frame is topped out or almost topped out. If we came right before it, you'd see we're above the 60 line, we're almost topped out on market cipher B. I'm gonna put a vertical line so we don't get lost. Uh, and let's remove these lines because you guys get the point. We're gonna play with this white line here. Okay, so you know that we're topped out on our environmental time frame. If you come down to the executional time frame now, now we're starting to look for bear divs. Okay, in this case, okay, these got to go, man, these got to go. In this case, um, we don't actually have any divs on the three minute. So it's possible that you might have not taken this trade, which is okay. 100% okay. Money flow is increasing, right? We have the money flow increasing. So we do need to be worried uh, in terms of shorting, like not worried, but you need to be aware of it, right? And, and again, manage your risk accordingly. However, we're at um, resistance. So we're not longing here, no matter what we're not longing. If we are going to long this level on a cheat sheet entry, what we do is we wait for price to break above. It has to break above. You do not long here. Never, ever, ever, ever are you longing here. Zero percent of the time. You wait for it to break and then you, not the retest. Retail says breakout, retest, whatever. That's not why I'm saying it needs to retest. When you're looking for a cheat sheet entry, like this could have been a cheat sheet entry. Uh, it, it's not, like if money flow was still thick, then this would have been a cheat sheet entry. You're looking for it to break the level, come back down at the resistance, enter on the cheat sheet entry. Or sorry, at the support. Okay, you're not longing here. You're not, oh, green dot, oh, we're pumping, I'm missing it. No. What do we know about vectors? Vector candles are tick volume. Vector candles are market maker behavior. We're on the smaller term time frames, and we know that vector candles on the smaller term time frames like to get recovered quicker than on the higher term time frames. Which means when you see a vector candle on a three minute time frame and you're at resistance, you're prioritizing the short back to the EMA because we have the vectors here. So we want, we want market maker to send price back down and recover that vector at least 50%, which in this case he did and he came back down to, to, your, to your 50 EMA. Now it's not a huge move, it's a couple hundred bucks, but if you're scalping and you're high leverage, you can make a lot of money doing this, okay? Let's jump onto the one minute time frame and let's see if we would have been able to take this short because I actually don't know if we would have been. Okay, so the one minute gives us a little bit more clarity and this is why I say you need to, not need to, you guys like you're grown, do whatever you want. <laughs> um, but what, what I suggest is that when we're trading, when we're scalping to to use your three minute as your executional time frame and not your one minute because you need to try to almost front run your executional time frame. Let's look at what happened here. We had our massive pump. We had our green vector candles into our resistance zone. We are already off the top of our head prioritizing shorts. Okay. And here we have clear bearish divergences in terms of the momentum waves. Now the money flow is increasing, which is concerning, but we do know that the waves are uh, leading for the money flow. So we're expecting money to come back out and we're expecting this vector to be recovered. Additionally, I believe the three minute was topped out. The three minute was also topped out. So if the three minute time frame, I'm sorry I'm jumping back and forth a lot, guys. It, again, you might have to watch this a couple of times. Like this gets very complicated. The three minute time frame, the only way that I will take the trade on the one minute, the way that I just showed you with money flow increasing like that still, is if the three minute is super topped out, okay? So our environmental time frame, the 12 is topped out. Our executional time frame, the three is topped out. And we're getting, we're getting bear divs on the one, I'll take that trade. Now I'm gonna be mindful that the money flow is increasing on the three minute and the one minute. So 
I may not use as large of a position size. I may, I may, um, you know, smaller position size and give it a little bit more room just in case to breathe. But if the three is topped out and the 12 is topped out and the one is giving you divs, and I think the one was topped out also, then, yeah, and the one is topped out also, you can take the trade. Okay, you can take the trade. Now, why was it not a good idea to short on this div? Actually, this wasn't a div. Money flow, well, money flow was increasing aggressively. Here, money flow, you could argue that was also topped out. So that's maybe another sign to short. Um, yeah, if you decided that you did not want to take the short, when and how could you enter? This is where our trend lines come in handy, okay? I'm gonna show you guys what to do and what to draw. Now, again, I've said this at the beginning, I'm not a huge fan of trend lines, I'm really not. But when you're scalping, I'm gonna come back to the three minute. When you're scalping, it can be helpful, okay? So let's get our trend line out and let's see. So we had this low and we had that, okay? You can, if you want to, wait for the break, right? We broke the trend line. We didn't continue higher like we expected to do, right? We had potentially, this is probably a golden pocket. Yeah, we had our golden pocket retrace um, after we already broke the trend and we're at resistance, okay? If you look over time, money flow is slightly decreasing. It's very slight, but it is. And, and momentum waves are coming down over time. So you can choose to enter there if you like. Now, when it comes to your trend lines, they're important to see how they break and how they react when they're at the trend lines. And also, your trend lines, you're going to be drawing a lot of them. Like I can even draw this. Oh, whoops. I can even draw this one as one also. When you're on the short-term time frames, you can also draw this, right? So if you were scared to short still at this golden pocket for whatever reason, when we break the trend line, you can enter here, even though, but you need to be mindful that this needs to be your stop loss. Whose mic is on right now? Can I ask you guys to mute your mics? <clears throat> okay. You're welcome. Who's this? I gotta mute you. Oh, we got a lot of people in here. Thanks guys for all being in here. Uh, okay. So this is a, mutes, mutes. Okay, they're muted. I don't know if you guys can still. Can you guys still hear? Uh, keep it simple. Keep it simple, Mitch. No, no, you guys are good. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, okay, so yeah, so trend lines are huge when it comes to this, and especially at your levels, right? Let's come on the one minute. And again, like you can you can see this quite often and all the time. Let me bring my vectors back up because we're gonna need the vector candles in a second here, right? So you're following your trend lines now. For me. I actually don't put the trend lines on my trading view. I put it on my exchange so it doesn't get too messy on my trading view because I have the EMAs and whatever. But this is how I do it. And I get really zoomed in, like super zoomed in when I'm at a key level and I will follow the trend. And it can even look something like as tight as this. Like this is the one minute time frame. We're super zoomed in right now. Whoops. We're super zoomed in. It can even be as tight as this, okay? You're looking for the break. You're looking for vector candles that could potentially be recovered in this area. And you're looking for the break, okay? I haven't really talked about trend lines the way that I am now and in this video, but the reason why they quote unquote work isn't because you drew the trend line and it broke the trend line and now you take the height and whatever. It's because there's liquidity here. That's why it's working. It's because there's money here. It's not because you know how to draw a trend line and now you're a great trader. Okay, that's not how it works. The second digit for the VIP Discord is a four. So let's hop back on our 15. Let's come on the 15 now. So you guys can, you guys can understand that, um, like the levels that we're looking for, right? Like clear levels just by eye. I can see here, there's a level, right? Many times prices bounced off that level. What I like to do is um, I like to take if they're like, if they've been crazy wicking like this, I like to take just the bodies, right? Like the bodies here, again, it's, it's not a perfect science, but it's give or take. The bodies here are where I draw the lines, not necessarily the wicks because the wicks kind of go all over the place, unless something like this happens where it's one clean 
wick, like one clean strong wick, or like here, for example, I will raise it up um, because they tend to respect those levels or even here, sure, like in between the two. Again, it's not a perfect science. Does anybody have any questions so far? <clears throat> No, you guys are good? Okay. So when it comes to scalping, how do you actually enter? You can limit. Sorry, sorry, mate. Yeah, no worries. I've got a question. Sure. But you said that um, when you drew the fib, we traced from earlier, you said that the sense of the golden pocket, which I didn't quite follow. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? On the golden pocket? Yeah. I'm not sure if you want to do that right now, but um, yeah. I'm gonna do. I'm actually my next video is gonna be a fib, a fib level, uh, a fibs okay. thing. So I'll explain it more in detail. But um, I mean, my this is how your default fibs, like your default fibs look like that. I'll show you how to draw it and like you know where to draw it from and whatever. But each line um, is like is kind of a support and resistance, I guess, if you want to call it that. And the most important support and resistance is your golden pocket, which is this level right here, and your seven eight six. And your golden pocket actually looks like this, but I don't I don't keep the second line on because it's not necessary. Like, okay, so it's a six on eight and the seven eight six. Really yeah, ones. exactly. And then I'm looking for like right. yeah, like I, for me, I will look through this whole zone, which is why I don't keep the red line because I I like I know that it's just more it's just more noise, you know. I don't need it. Anyway, but yeah, my next video will be uh, will be fibs, so I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that. But yeah, okay, so now how can you actually enter these trades? A lot of the times, yeah, I'm going to show them the fixed range. I'm going to show them the fixed range. So a lot of the times you can enter with, with limiting in um, for sure, but because the moves happen pretty quickly, um, you can also mark it in. Now, I need to say this. Depending on the exchange that you're on, will determine really whether you should be limiting in or marketing in, okay? Because a lot of the exchanges screw you over in terms of fees. That is absolutely a thing. And if you're marketing in, your fees, I don't know what your fees are for your ex per own personal exchanges that you guys are all using. Of course, I don't know. But um, but for, like I use like MEXC, but for all of them, your limiting fees are significantly lower than your marketing fees, okay? I think Binance is like a crazy crazy number or whatever so you can mark it in if you have a good exchange mexi is pretty pretty low uh in terms of um in terms of fees but you should be limiting in especially if you're taking multiple trades a day you should be limiting in because again it's going to eat it's going to eat into your profits so how can we really do that well there's a couple ways that we can do that um first of all after you're at support and you you find your trend lines. Um, you're looking for plays like swing failure patterns, like what happened earlier today and whatnot. Um, that's when you can start getting your, your limit orders out. Now, I'm going to actually just very quickly switch to a, switch to a, a demo trading account so I can show you guys. You know what? I'm just going to do it here. So what you can do is, well, what I like to do anyways is to scatter your entry, okay? I don't typically do a sniper entry when it comes to scalping because price is never guaranteed. You're never, you never know where it's going to go. Like, you don't know that it's going to stop right here at this point, right? You don't know it's going to stop literally right here at 29617. We don't know that. So what I will do is I will place my orders, a few orders. Let's just say my overall position is $1,000. I'll put 250 here, 250 here, 250 here, uh, and then like maybe 250 there, right? So let's just say this is the case. Three of my orders got hit and the last one did not get hit and we got our reaction. As soon as we start to see our reaction, that is when I will mark it in the rest of my order. Okay? So if this order did not get hit, then I will mark it in $250 or... I will just, because like scalping happens so often throughout the day, I won't mark it in. I'll just have a $750 position as opposed to a $1,000 position. And whatever happens, happens. Doesn't matter. So be it, you know?
But that's that's what I do, and that's how I will enter. And I'll have them scattered around the air, the the level, right? And I will only have it scattered around the level if Market Cipher is giving me what I want to see on the three minute. Are we getting divergences? If we're like here, are we getting bear divs? Is money flow? Are we like bear diving on on money flow as well? Right. If the three minute is not topped out, like right now, it's not topped out then I need to see money flow coming down. I It's like I have to, right? If the one, like I, yeah, I have to see money flow coming down. Otherwise, I won't take the trade. Even if the one minute gives me divergences. Let's look right now in real time. Money flow. So right now we're approaching our level, right? We're approaching our level. Um, we could go back in time. Yeah, no, I, I think I'm pretty happy with this level. So we're approaching our level right now. We could reject and we could say, oh man, let me short. Nah, man, we're not at our level, okay? But let's look a look really in, in real time right now. So we are getting bear divs. Price is getting higher and we're getting this wave and this wave, right? Waves are coming down. Money flow, which is the holy grail indicator, I've said it a million times, is coming down. Let's get our EMAs. <clears throat> we got some vectors that we can recover here, right? But the three minute... Even right now, the three minute is giving us our div. Maybe I'll take this. No, I wouldn't take this trade because we're not at the level. But if the three minute was way up here, even without a div, then I may consider taking it. So I need to see my one minute um, diverging. If my executional time frame is, it, it has to be at the high. Remember, we're trying to front run. The whole reason that we're even looking at the one minute is to front run this green dot. So if this gives us a green dot and it like comes up like this, we're looking to front run this by looking at divs on the one minute. And this hopefully is front running our 12 minute, which is hopefully up here as well. Okay. I wouldn't necessarily look more beyond that because the larger term time frames don't really matter when it comes to quick scalps. Um, because your quick scalps are in and out, which kind of brings me to my next point. You cannot have the mentality that you're going to long here and say, oh, I'm holding this to 36K. You cannot do that. You will get absolutely destroyed. Okay. Scalping is quick in and quick out. It's high leverage typically. Now you can use whatever leverage you're comfortable with for sure. We already have talked about risk management and how you should never, ever get liquidated and how you should have a clear invalidation. Which, when you're scalping, is pretty easy. If the price starts to go past your level, like, get the hell out. <laughs> it's not that complicated. Um, but you, you want to make sure that you're using proper risk management. And you want to make sure that your mindset, your mentality is quick in, quick out. None of this I'm holding it for however long bullshit. Especially if you are not doing what I'm saying, which is get your levels on the 12 minute. We could even get levels on the three minute. Like look at how I can, I can really start to narrow this down. I can put a line there. I can put a line here. I can put a line there. I can put a line here. We have a line there already. I can eh, arguably do a line there. We'll put a line there. So just like, look how quick that was, right? Again, it's not an exact science. This is now our executional time frame support and resistance, right? So now we're really looking to front run our three minute with our one minute. And look at what I just said. If I was, I said I may have taken that trade because the money flow was coming down, whatever. Let's just say I took that trade and I'm on the one minute, get like, I probably would have already taken profits. Okay, and that's like so early, like 0.12% move. So my point is, is you cannot have the mindset that you're going to take a scalp and you're going to run that scalp all the way up to 36K. You cannot have that mindset. No matter what, you can't. Which the next part is taking profits, right? How do we take profits? When do we take profits? Well, there's a few ways we can do that. Scalping in a sideways market like this, I'm going to remove all these levels because you guys get the point. Scalping in a sideways market like this, is different than scalping in a trending market, okay? If, a tr if For those who don't know or may not know, trending is just if it's going up, right? Sideways is obviously if it's sideways. 
Scalping the sideways market is different than, than in, a, in, a, in a trending market. In the trending market, you're definitely going to want to put your trend line, um, as I taught you earlier. But you're mainly looking for cheat sheet entries. Okay? In a trending thing. So you're like three-minute cheat sheet entries. That's how I've gotten into a lot of trades. <clears throat> excuse me. That of coins that have gone without me, like XRP, for example. You can get in on cheat sheet entries. Look at this cheat sheet entry. Uh, kind of. Not really a full one, but potential cheat sheet entry there, right? This is how you're going to get into trending markets. Okay? Now, when it comes to sideways markets, you're looking for the divs. You're looking for the support and resistance, and you're looking for the money flow over time to be diverging. A big misconception that people don't seem to agree with me on and they're wrong and I'm right, sorry to say, is that you can't look at Market Cipher on the three minute, for example, this far in advance. And absolutely you can. You absolutely can. It's not clean. I'm not saying it's clean and I'm not saying it's the best thing ever, but you can, right? Here you can see prices have been coming down and here we have money flow coming up. That's a divergence, right? Anyways, um, <clears throat> what's the question? What leverage do I generally use? I'm going to be honest. Like all of my trades typically are between 80 and 100x leverage. But that's because all of my trades start off as scalps, most of them. And then I take profit mad early and then I let the rest run. You know? <clears throat> but yeah, you're going to want to take profits very quickly. And um, for the trending markets, you're going to use trend lines. For the uh, sideways markets, you're going to use something called the fixed volume tool. Now, I haven't made a video on this either, separate, like its own video, and I will do it. Um, but I did cover it briefly in our trading ranges video. So that's something, if you, don't, if you haven't seen that video, it is on YouTube. Go back and watch it. But essentially, what your fixed volume range is, in short, is anytime price comes above here, you're looking for shorts, and anytime price comes below here, you're looking for longs, right? This is called our value area high. This is called our value area low. Again, I will do a video on it that's like fully in detail and giving you guys the ins and the outs of it. But generally, if you decide to do it, it's on the left here where this like, it'll actually, this long position will be the default. Um, you click the little arrow and you go fixed, uh, fixed range volume profile, and then you drag it across the range um, that you're in. So let's say I was going to redo it. You take it from here, like price dipped. I don't include the dip. This is our range, right? And then you can scout based on that right now, along with your levels. So right here, right? We have, we have a line, right? Uh, support, 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 right? Let's just say we have a line. So now... We have our value, uh, value area low, which we are below, and we have this support level or this resistance level. So we're not necessarily looking to, to long here, right? Because this is something that's called confluence. If you don't know what that is, it's when multiple things are pointing to the same direction. Do I expect price to necessarily break right out of here? Probably not because of this confluence right here alone. The third number for the VIP Discord is a five. <clears throat> All right. Any questions so far? Yeah, mate, I've got one. Yes. Um, the, when you drew this um this value sorry this volume thing, um, how did you define like the range? Do you just kind of like Kind of guess, I guess, and then just try and make sure like there's a biggest overlap between the like, range, I suppose, or is that like something? when I'm pulling the volume, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, great question. Very good question. So ranges are um are subjective. Uh and there's multiple ways to do it. The way that I do it is like some people will pull a range from a date, right? Like a certain date, like oh today's whole range, which you can do. Again, it's very subjective. What I like to do is by is just pulling it based on the like the very visible range. So like here you can see. I mean the wick is kind of it kind of makes it ugly, but let's just say before the wick, 
that was our range, right? Like you can you can clearly see a high and a low, even this, right? You can clearly see a high and a low. And then what I do is I'll pull it after the dump, wherever the range begins. Now what happens is let's just say, let's get rid of all the previous price action, for example. So this is the range that I will play within, okay? And then let's just say now price makes its way up here and then maybe back down here. And then now you can see that our new range is from up here to down here, right? So now this is our range. So then what I'll do and pretend this is like, again, not here. Well, then now what I'll do is I'll take my fixed volume and I'll do it across the whole new range and it'll give me a volume profile for this larger range. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay, got me. Thanks. Yeah, so this is more diving into my trading ranges tutorial. That is a very good video. I very much recommend that you go and you watch that. I don't typically use fixed volume when it comes to scalping. I just use my simple support and resistance. Uh, but you know, you can, uh, you can, you can decide to do that if you, if you decide to do it now in terms of taking profits, what is my general position size on a confident trade, like three to 2%. So I don't use, um, percentages when it comes to my, my trades personally. Um, I think I also talked about this in my risk management course, but I use unit sizes. So, you know, I don't, I don't keep too much money on exchanges because I don't trust exchanges. Um, so because of that, I like crank up my leverage and whatever, but I use unit sizes. So like, you know, if I'm, if like your, your, your risk should not be any different depending, like, even if you're on a, a day trade versus a swing trade versus a scalp, like on a scalp, you have to be aware that you're taking more trades. So you, you may lose. So you may want to use a smaller position size than normal, but in general, you should never be going beyond what you're comfortable losing. I know that was a horrible um, response to that question. My apologies, but that's kind of the best answer I got for you right now. Anyways, when you're scalping, um, you want to, so the first thing we do is we, we set our stop loss. As soon as you enter, as soon as you hit your entry, you, we set your stop loss, which again, like you're going to do your trend lines and you're going to look for a reaction, right? Like this is a very big reaction. I would not long here and then put my stop loss here. That is too big of a move for a scalp right? $300 give or take is too big. Um, so what I would do in this instance is let's just say I was here and let's just say my trading view alert actually went off like it was supposed to. And I entered where I was supposed to stupid trading view. Um, I would wait for the retest like we just did right here. Here we have a, a confirmed green dot and I would put my stop loss right under here and you know what if i lose i lose it is what it is actually i probably would put it under this wick ah uh, maybe not maybe i'd put it there maybe under oh whoops maybe under the bodies like maybe there that's where i would put my stop loss uh and then and then you can choose to however you want to do this right like so you can either remember when you're when you're scalping you're exposing yourself to the market quite often, which can be dangerous. So as soon as you enter a scalp, especially if you're on the one minute, the first thing you need to think of is how you're going to get out. Okay. Whether it hits your stop loss, which hopefully it doesn't, but how are you going to get out? And then now this is comes to like where the taking profits part comes in, right? Here we have a level just on the one minute. You guys get the point. I'm not going to go back and, and, and do it on the larger term timeframes, but let's just say here we have a level. You can choose to, or even, even up here, man, like you can even aim for this wick right over here, right? Cause we retested. So you can take 25% out here. God, that is ugly. 25% out. You could take right at this high somewhere here or even here, whatever, like whatever. I, I wouldn't actually do it at the high. I would probably do it like around here. Um, you could do it there. You could also set and like not you don't you don't need to take a large amount out. Uh, it doesn't need to be the whole trade. It can be if you decide if you want to. It can be, but you could do twenty five percent. You could do fifty percent, whatever it is that you're comfortable with, and then you can shoot up here for your next one, right? Your your next high. If you have a fixed range volume, you could, and this is like really degen stuff now, but. Let's just say you pulled a fixed volume there. Oh, this shouldn't be extend right. Uh, so 
So let's just say you pulled a fixed range on this very, very, very small uh, price action, which again, you can do. You can take profit at the value area low. You can take profit at the point of control. You can take profit at the value area high. And then you can just let the rest run. And you know what? If it runs to 36K from here, great. But as soon as you take your first profit, you're moving your stop loss to your entry. Let's say your entry is here. You're moving it to the entry. This is non-negotiable because we're taking many trades a day. You're exposing yourself to the market many times a day and many times a day they're going to come for your money. So you better cover your ass. Okay, and maybe put the stop loss even a little bit higher to cover your fees. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is as price is rising, manually do, or you could do, I guess, automatically. You can also have a running stop, right? So price moves up, price moves up, puts in this new low. Now we're going to move our stop loss to this low, right? Price moves up, we get a new low, we're going to move it up here, right? Next one, we get our, we get up here. Eventually, when we do it, we're going to get hit, which we got hit pretty high up, actually, in this case, right? Um, but that's another way to do it, is to follow and just, like, have your stop. Sometimes, you know, you'll, you'll put your stop here, and then price will just do this, and then keep going and wick you out. You can't have the mentality, oh, man, I'm like, I should have stayed in. No, you shouldn't have stayed in. Stick to the rules. There's many trades that you can take in the day when you're scalping. So that's your priority. As soon as you get in, you need to get out. <laughs> like as, as, as like contradicting as that sounds, as soon as you get in, you got to get out. Here, I would not consider this a bull flag and then expect it to break up because of the bull flag. No, but I'm drawing the trend lines because I want to see what's going to happen right here. Are we going to break or are we going to reject? And I'll even extend the trend lines. Like, so when you're scalping, it's not uncommon for your 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 charts to like, you know, look like this. It's not uncommon for like it to get a little bit wild. Because a lot goes on, right? So I'll do it like this. Now if price comes, we're at support. Here we're looking to long. Even if market cipher doesn't look great right now, it doesn't look good to long, we're not shorting here. You are not shorting. No way. Anyways, that's how I scalp. Obviously, you can pull your Fibonacci's and whatever. Another thing I forgot to mention, which I'll touch on real quick, um, are your candlesticks, okay? You want to look for rejections, and you want to look for, um, for, not rejections, sorry. You want to look for strong reactions, right? Let's look here. This is a strong reaction. We're on the one minute, so, you know, this is only a $20 move, $30 move. But look at it relative to like what's what's been happening before it and what's around it. This is a strong reaction. What you could do is when it comes back up, you can hit the long and put the stop under the low. Or if you decide to, decide to front run it, you can also do that, right? If you're three minutes, run the one, remember. So if your executional time frame is bottomed out and your environmental time frame is bottomed out and these are vectors, I don't know if they are. Let's see. Let's find out. Okay, they're not. But if these are vectors and your other time frames are bottomed out, I might kind of just take a risk and shoot the shot somewhere on the wick. As soon as I, but I don't get the wick on its way down. I get the wick when it comes back up. As soon as I see that it's down and it starts to come back up, I might start. This is where I will mark it in. I won't limit it. In. I would mark it in there. Okay. Especially if these were vectors. I'm like, okay, let me get in real quick, hit the EMAs. Maybe you could take profit there right? If you're unsure about the trade, you can take profit early. You can mark it out if you need to because you're scared of your entry and then you can move price to your entry. Or alternatively, you could keep price at your stop. Like you could keep your stop loss where it is, but take half out here so that if your stop loss gets hit, let's just say you're you, here, you made 50 bucks. And then here, if you get hit, you get minus 50, right? So you're neutral. This is also another reason why you can take profit. So that if you want to keep your stop loss there, you're not worried, you're not sure if it's going to come back down, but you think you think you might have a chance. You take 50 out, not because you want the 50, but it's so that you can be net neutral if it comes down and you're kind of iffy about your stop loss. Okay, which you shouldn't really be taking trades that you're iffy about it. But sometimes um, human nature is to get over leveraged. Can I 
yeah, so human nature is to over leverage and it's tempting. And just in case you find yourself in that situation. So we're basically taking all of the lessons that uh, we've learned in the previous on my YouTube. We're looking at vector candles. We're looking at our EMAs. We're looking at market cipher. When you're at support, you want to find hidden bullish divergences. When you're sorry, when you're not looking for a reversal. So let's just say, let's find a good example here. Let's just say this wave comes up and for whatever reason comes all the way up here and does not take this high. Something like this. This is when you're allowed to short. Uh, actually, that's not like I would actually rather it do this, right? You're looking for shorts there. So when you're looking for a continued move through the through the level, this is where you're looking to short, and it's because you have a hidden divergence, right? A continuation, hidden divergence. When you're looking for reversals, you're looking for bull divs or bear divs, whichever way that you're. Whichever way that you're trading. Does anybody have... Oh, uh, latest stream. When is it going to be on YouTube? This is going to be on YouTube either later today or tomorrow, the latest. And then I will in post add in the codes. Um, so you guys can all go back, watch it, absorb the information. And then as soon as this stream is done, I'm going to purge all my VIP people. I love you, but I got to purge you. And then, uh, and then I'm going to post my levels in there. Does anyone else have any questions right now? Okay, if nobody has any questions, this is your scalping tutorial. All right, I'm going to leave you with this. Don't remember. I think this is probably the most important thing, and I, I honestly didn't even plan this analogy. I thought of it like during the stream. When you're scalping, when you're on the one minute, it's easy to lose sight of what's going on. People always say, when in doubt, zoom out. I don't, I'm not people. My analogy of the movie theater is way better. When you're sitting at the back, you can see the movie well. When you're right at the front, you can't see a damn thing. Okay? So make sure that when you're scalping, you're using your three-minute, if you want to, you could be a degen and make your three-minute, your, your environmental time frame and your one-minute, your executional time frame. If you want to, it's crazy. I don't do it, but you could. When you're scalping, front-run your executional time frame using the one-minute or try to, and then front-run your, your environmental time frame using your executional time frame. And as you guys start to get more experienced with this, you can start using the one to front run the three, to front run the 12, to front run the one hour, to front run the four hour, to front run the daily. And when people ask me what time frames I use and, and why I say kind of all of them, that's why, right? It can be very confusing. I did a whole time frames video that's important. But um, once you can get good at it, that's what I suggest you do. But for now, stick to your executional time frame, your environmental time frame. And then the one minute to kind of front run your executional time frame. That's what I would suggest. Um, obviously, again, I'm not your dad, so do whatever you want. All right. Any other questions? You guys can unmute, by the way. You don't have to type it if you are comfortable unmuting. And the fourth digit for the VIP Discord is a eight. When long, though? Yeah, man, we're, we're waiting for our long. We missed our long, so we're going to wait for our long. Maybe we'll we'll stay on stream after I'll end it uh, for YouTube and we'll stay on stream on Discord and we'll we'll catch this long. We'll figure out where it's gonna be because I don't know where it's gonna be, but we need to get into it. If this is the low, I don't know if it is. Oh man, you guys are messaging me in many different places right now. <clears throat> no worries, no worries. Okay, guys, so no questions. Uh, so you don't pay much attention to the vector candles on the low time frames. No, you absolutely do. Absolutely. Like this vector right here, you need to be aware of it. Now, remember, it doesn't always recover. And I'm actually surprised that it didn't really recover um, all of it, but it recovered half of it, right? So we can, I don't want to say safe to safe to ignore it, um, but we need to be, we need to at least acknowledge that it did recover half of it. But remember, the one minute time frame is 
they're, they're more likely to recover the vectors on the smaller term time frames quicker, which is in our benefit as scalpers. If this level right now, if this these candles kept coming down, look how it recovered it, bro. It's it's been two minutes, three minutes, and they already recovered the vector. If if this gives you red vector, red vector, red vector, red vector, red vector, and you're here and you're bottomed out on the three and you have like a bull div on the one, you can take that trade expecting all these vectors to, to be recovered. So they absolutely do matter. The vector candles hundred percent matter. Hundred percent. But again, I wanna I need you guys to know this, like it, you can get very confused doing this. If you're scalping, you can lose sight of your overall picture. If you can find a way to position yourself to be short from here, let's say you shorted from the top and you're good, and you're holding your short, and then you start scalping, it's in your. It's more beneficial because you have this as kind of insurance. If you're not in any trades, you shouldn't really be scalping in my opinion. I mean, you could, but... It's very easy to lose sight of what's going on. You can get so lost in the one minute and the three minute and then have no idea what's going on and then miss where, where you would have otherwise made a, uh, a better move and a larger move, right? So that's something to consider as well. And again, like what I like to do, and this is the, one of the first things that I said is what I like to do is once I'm at my key level, like this is my key level. If we start to range around here in my key level, I'm prioritizing longs and I know I want to get in longs because I'm at a macro support. And this is how you can work to getting to towards getting the best entry. If it tends to do this. Yeah, you need to practice. And and <clears throat> I've also said this many times. This is the last thing I'm going to say. I'm going to leave you guys with this. Guys, I've been watching the one minute time frame. Not the one minute. I've been watching trading view for a long time. Okay. It's been two, two and a half years of me just watching trading view. I watch this like it's television. I'm not proud of it, but it is what it is, okay? If you understand the one minute, listen, watch the one minute for like, I don't wanna say an hour, cause to be honest, it's not enough time. Watch, just watch the one minute, okay? Look at how it moves. Looking in hindsight is so easy. You could see everything in hindsight. Right now, like we don't know if there's gonna be a red dot here or this green dot is gonna curve, it's gonna do this and keep going up. We don't know that, okay? And in hindsight, it's gonna be like, oh, that was so easy to see. But in, in real time, it's not easy. I want you to see how the VWAP moves on the one minute. I want you to watch how the money flow changes during the candle. It doesn't It doesn't print until it prints. I want you to see in between. Look at how the VWAP just, turned, just came down, okay? Is it gonna close down here? I don't know, let's watch it, 20 seconds. Let's see what happens. It could, it could be facing up by the end in 10 seconds. I don't think it's going to, but let's see. <clears throat> and red dot. Red dot, okay? Look at this. So now it starts to curve. Is this red dot going to confirm? right? These are all, once you start to see, once you, once you watch it like this, I don't mean look every once in a while. And again, I'm not proud to say this, but once you watch it, like watch it like it's TV, you will start to see the way that it moves. You'll start to know. Sometimes I see a red dot and I'll long. And like, people are like, wait, what? Why would you long? I mean, no one says that, but you might say, why would you long there? There's a red dot. Sometimes I see things and I'm like, yeah, I mean, I see money flows coming down. I see it, whatever. But like, it just doesn't look like it's going to go down. Even though what an average person would would deem as like it would go down. I look at it and I'm like, no, I, I'm not convinced. Right? Being on the one minute is beneficial because it moves quick. And you can see and watch what happens. Look, the red dot's gone. I said that at the beginning of the minute. And then once you can get good at it on the one minute, you can start to see it's all the same, man. If I pull up just, just Market Cipher, this looks exactly the same as this. It's literally all the same. It doesn't matter what time frame I'm on. It could be any time frame. They all move the same. So that's why we jump on the one and we learn how it moves. I very much recommend it. If you're going to scalp, 
and you're not going to listen to me for whatever reason and you're not going to try with one dollar and learn the difference of leverage and not leverage and understanding the percentages at least before you do it do a little bit of homework and just watch this thing for an hour just watch market cipher b and the money flow guys the money flow is the most important thing when money flow is increasing and price is decreasing you're looking for longs but other fake indicators do not give it to you like this clearly keep in mind we also need to keep we also need our cheat sheet entries we also need like like at the back of our mind we need our we need to think of our cheat sheet entries we need to think of our vector candles so there's some variables to it sometimes i see a red dot and long yeah <laughs> That's the quote, man. Sometimes I see a red dot and I long. And you know what? And I'm right. Like, I'm telling you, like, I can, I've stared at this thing for so long now. I, like, dream about it. <clears throat> One way to get a good pulse on the market is to just sit and watch price action and reaction. But also compare to how it moves. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, that's a good point. Um, every coin has its own, like, personality, we'll say. They all move differently. And uh, they all kind of just have their own similar, similar patterns. All right. That's important because um, what you may think will happen on Bitcoin may not happen on XRP or ETH or, or Doge or any other coin or Pepe. YouTube people, thank you very much for watching. If you made it to the end, I appreciate you guys. As you know, I believe in providing value up front and a lot of that value comes from our Discord. So make sure you join the Discord. The link is down below. I also have a VIP section that is completely free. The codes that you heard throughout the video, if you DM my bot those codes, you will be entered into the VIP section where I give you the exact levels that I'm looking for and the exact trade setups that I'm looking for. I appreciate you guys. And um, yeah, we today was a lot. If you decide to uh, purchase Market Cipher again, you can get 20% off with my affiliate link down below and using trader code or trader code, <laughs> using discount code trader geo. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, make sure you come to the Discord and you ask questions and we got good people in there. We're over 400 people now and we're almost at 700 subs. So it's a great community. Make sure you come and join, but I'll leave you guys with that. Happy trading as always, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.